Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, I had a quick uh, weekend Arduino project for you. Did you ever have one of these things? The Radio Shack Microcomputer Trainer? They were fun. They came out in the uh, early 80s and it was this kit where you got a uh, Texas Instrument microcontroller, you got a seven segment LED, seven LEDs, you've got a 20 pad keypad here, all your hex digits from <coughs> zero to F, and an address set, an increment, a run, and a reset. And then you got this really small little um, grouping of commands that you can put in. <clears throat> and the way this computer worked, it was kind of a hybrid between an assembly language and machine code uh, programming system. You would come in and you'd, you'd see things like, um, look at uh, number eight is TIA, which means transfer into A. There was an accumulator A that you used for most of your operations. So you can actually transfer some number into A, and then notice the um, operation one is AO, or A out. So it would take whatever's stored in the A accumulator and send it to the seven segment display. It's a really neat thing, had, had a lot of different applications for it. So um, <clears throat> I hadn't had one in a long time, so I went on eBay and went and bought it. Played with it for a little bit, threw it in my closet. And then looking at it the other day, I said, you know, it'd be great if this were available to more people. Then I thought, well, there's no better platform for the masses than Arduino. So here it is. It's an Arduino implementation of this Radio Shack microcomputer trainer. Now, <clears throat> one of the great things is you can get the manual for this online. If you go to my blog, I have a link to this gentleman's site. He actually went and... Um, scan this all in, turn it into a PDF, and it's great because Radio Shack takes you step by step through what all the commands mean and, and how to implement them, and then starts giving you little programs. Um, like for instance, 10, use of KA to transfer data from the keyboard to the display. And you just keep going through all these lessons, and it, it teaches you each one of these commands, and eventually they start getting getting pretty healthy. So the implementation I did, there's going to be a couple differences, but I wanted to make it as simple and cheap as possible. So I used one of these lead in key displays. Uh, I got mine from Banggood, where I, I buy just almost everything now. Um, if they would sell food, I would probably get all of it from them. But uh, it, it's a great little display. It just takes <clears throat> three connections between the Arduino and this board, and you get access to all these seven-segment LEDs, uh, all the LEDs on the top, and these eight key switches. So one of the big differences is I'm going from having 20 input key switches to having eight. So really, I can't even input hexadecimal. So the way I've decided to make this happen <clears throat> is the way these keys work is the first key resets you, brings you back to zero. The second key is an increment key. Whenever you put in the desired value for this memory location, hit the increment key. It'll save that value and increment the memory location by one. So let me demonstrate. I'll, I'll show a little uh, program here. We'll just write one. If we want to um, take our accumulator A and transfer a number into it, the operating code for that is 8. So these two switches over here will actually implement the value over here, increment or de decrement. So if we get to 8, that's what I want stored in my memory location 00. So if I go to increment, It'll load that 8 and increment the memory location by 1 and show you what's in there. So currently there's 0 in there. So the transfer into A command takes one operand, and that's the number you want transferred into A. So let's just do 5. So that's 5. I'm going to increment that. So now I should have 8, which is transferred into A, and then 5, which is 5. So it'll transfer 5 into A. So now I want to display that on my display. So that's output my A to the display and that's opcode 1. So I'm going to load opcode 1 into that memory location and increment. So the last thing I want to do since this programming doesn't have an end function is I'm just going to jump back to my first command so that this just does an infinite loop and the jump command is um, F and that's just decrement once and I get to F. So I load into F and it just so happens the memory location I want is 0, 0, which is 4 and 5 are both at 0, because that's their reset values. So the way I can run this is I'll reset my counter back to 0. Um, and notice that 8 shows back up, because that's what I stored there. And then the third key over is a run key. If I hit run, hey, just what we said would happen. 
5 was loaded into A and then displayed on the output. So that's a, a really simple um, program just to show you kind of the capabilities of this. Uh, one of the neat things though, since we're dealing with Arduino, that I decided to incorporate is Arduino's uh, use of this serial port. It will actually load up a, a serial monitor. So what you can do then is I can now type any uh, program that I want into just a, a word editor or something like that. So I'm not doing these cumbersome switch uh, clicking. Um, and in fact, there's a couple that I'm going to post on my blog along with um, all the hookup information on this, links to the manual, and just other information on this project so you can get it up and running really quick. But uh, I'll have some of these pre-built uh, exercises for you. And number 56 turns on the binary LEDs one at a time in both directions. So I've highlighted that. I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my Arduino's COM port that I have hooked up. I'm going to paste it in there. So that program is ready to go. So before I send, what I'm going to do is, if I go back to my board, this third button over, right next to the increment decrement buttons, is a download button. I'm sorry, the fourth button. No. What did I do? There it is. Yeah, it is the third button over the download button. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just download that program that I put in here by hitting the send button. Send button then sends it all and you're left with the final uh, memory location that was loaded in its value. So now if you reset and you hit run, you'll see the LEDs chase back and forth and the counter shows you which one you're on. So just a, a cute little implementation of this. The only other thing I added was a little speaker up here and you can actually play tones uh, with this. The way I've implemented it with the code currently is it only plays two different kinds of codes. Um, so it would be easy for someone to take this and add the tone library from Arduino and um, some of the commands actually um, vary the tones that you can send and you can play little songs and things like that. I haven't implemented that, but that would be pretty easy um, for you guys to add. Um, the other thing too is if you write an extensive program, one of the things that will let you do is actually download the entire memory of this. And if, I, if I reset, um, <clears throat> so that third button over is the program button. Next button over is the dump button. If you press that, you will dump to the screen the entire contents of memory. This will allow you to just grab that, save it into a document, and now you don't have to worry about retyping something in because you've got it. Um, so just a couple things there that made it easy. The only other thing to keep in mind is there is a fourth button, which is the memory location. Um, I just hit run again. The fourth button, which is the memory location. It starts at location 50. Uh, I believe there's 16 memory locations. And you would enter uh, this memory. It's used for a lot of programs to pre-position data. Uh, like you'll you'll input a bunch of numbers and there'll be a program that will actually sort them or look for the biggest one. So if you need to do that, you would do it the same way you enter programs. You're in data mode, so you're entering for the memory. So say in 50, I wanted to have um, 3. In 51, I wanted 1 and so forth. So if you, if you um, reset and I go to look at memory, you'll see the memory's been stored. If I increment to 51, it's been stored as 1. So that just gives you a place where you can put a string of numbers, and then some of the programs will just manipulate that data. Or you can actually save to memory from your program um, so that you don't hook up the accumulator um, that, that's used in every other operation for this. So I hope you've got some time and you've got one of these cheap little boards. Uh, I have the link to this on Banggood. It's like $3.50. It's just crazy cheap. Um, but it's a great weekend project to do. And it's really easy to expand. You should be able to look at the code and understand it pretty readily and quickly. And we can go ahead and resurrect this old Radio Shack microcomputer trainer uh, for a whole new generation of people to see what it's like to actually have to program on the machine level. Um, and it's pretty fun, and it really does teach you a lot about computers. So, um, you know, enjoy, and please go to my blog for all the directions and all the links. Thanks a lot.